Hello, today I will tell you a story about a killer, a GoPro killer. There were many of these, but only one was fit for the job, E4K. Seriously, the camera is really friendly and nice, but better is the current top-of-the-line GoPro 4 Black Edition in both battery life, ergonomics and image quality. My name is Dmitro Voloshin, let's look at the details of this case. First, the looks. The camera looks more like its predecessor, the Xiaomi Yi. It is slightly longer, has different build materials and a new set of colors. It's now available in black, white and iPhone-ish rose gold. On the front, the proud label saying all about the 4K video and the 12 megapixel stills the camera is capable of taking. There is also a notification LED that for some reason does not blink or light up at all when the video is recording, the 160 degrees wide 2.8 aperture bright lens. The front panel itself is made of fine plastic. On the left, there is a micro USB port covered with a non-detachable door. The camera is charged through it, outputs the video signal and can be connected to a computer. The right side of the body is empty. On the bottom, there is a metal tripod mount, an extremely convenient thing, I would say, which GoPro still lacks. Also here is the door for the battery and the micro SD card compartment. The door is very solid and is made of steel. On the top, there is the only physical button on the whole body that starts, stops recording, changes the mode and turns the camera on and off. It has an LED indicator built in. There are also two microphones for stereo sound recording and a rather big speaker grill. The most interesting part is the back of the camera. You'll find a huge for an action cam, capacitive touchscreen with 2.19 inches diagonal with 640 by 360 resolution. The aspect ratio is 16 by 9. The pixel per inch density is 330, which is more than Apple's Retina specification. The screen is covered with a scratch-proof glass and a capacitive sensor. The bezel around the screen is narrow, which is both convenient and cool looking. The camera is comfy to hold and the touch controls are really comfy from the very first time you pick up the camera. Xiaomi decided to move all the settings and the camera controls to the touch interface. The only physical button is the shutter button on top. It is the only button that can be pressed when the camera is inside its protective case, so you have to set the parameters beforehand and then the top button would really be all you need. The on-screen interface is really good. It is fast, reliably responsive to the touch and very intuitive. By swapping top to bottom, like on a smartphone, you can access the quick menu where you can control Wi-Fi, Bluetooth remote connection, screen lock and the camera power off. On the left, the playback button, which allows to conveniently review the captured stuff. You can quickly swipe through the footage and photos and scroll through the individual video files like you would do on a smartphone or computer. On the top left, the icon for the mode. On the right, a very precise battery charge indicator. On the right bottom, there is a cog icon, which is the way to access the main menu of the camera. The main menu is split into two sections, capture settings and device settings. In the capturing menu, you can choose the video resolution and frames per second, and the option list is huge. You get 10 resolutions in a variety of frame rates. Cool. You get two 4K modes, the regular and the ultra. The ultra means ultra-wide. Then the whole width of the lens is used and the image edges are even more fisheye-like. You get one frame rate for 4K, 25 for PAL and 30 for NTSC. You also get the 2.5K or 2560 by 1920, the 1440p or 1920 by 1440, which together with the 1280 by 960 capture the full sensor readout and hence have the 4x3 ratio and cover the widest possible picture vertically. All other modes have the 16x9 ratio. The full HD can be captured at 120 FPS and the HD at a whopping 240 FPS. That is twice faster than the Hero 4. You also get the 848 by 480 200 FPS mode, which is kind of pointless. Overall, the amount of settings would satisfy anyone. Further, the metering mode, center or spot, automatic low light mode, which will essentially drop the frame rate to 25 or 30 from higher rates when the light is scarce. Smart. Video quality. This one can pretty much stay at high all the time white balance. There is auto and the presets for cloudy, sunny and stuff, but importantly there is the native mode, in which the sensor data is captured with no white balance processing, so the signal stays clean, which is very good for the post-processing. Then there is the ability to choose ISO, exposure compensation from minus 2 to plus 2 EV, or 4 times darker than the default or 4 times brighter, electronic image stabilization, which works only up to full HD and at frame rates no larger than 60 FPS. There is also an option to timestamp the footage. The stabilizer limitation is due to the sensor being read out at 1 to 1 ratio for 4K and 2.5K modes, so it is not possible to electronically cut the sides of the image to then use them as the margins for the stabilization. 4K stabilizing is not yet implemented anywhere anyway. 
the device settings, the most interesting here is the adjust lens distortion function, or previously called lens rectification. This slightly cuts the frame, but totally eliminates the lens distortion and all of the fisheye look. The video becomes straight, you lose the action cam feel, and can shoot like with an ordinary phone or camcorder. This is also not available in 4K for the same reason. Next, Wi-Fi settings, which is dual band in this camera and supports all the new 5 GHz bands. The camera as its predecessor creates its own hotspot, and one can access it from the smartphone using the Yi Action app. Further, the memory card info and formatting, and the card by the way can be up to 128 gigs in size, the default mode at which the camera powers on, wireless Bluetooth remote connection which is now directly connected to the camera rather than the phone and its app, screen brightness adjustment, notification sound volume, a video playback volume is set right on the viewing screen by the way. Finally, the recording format choice, PAL or NTSC. In the PAL mode, the frame rate will be a multiple of 25, in an NTSC mode, a multiple of 30. So the max frame rate will differ in these modes. The issue with this is that if you shoot in PAL mode in US or NTSC mode in Europe, the artificial light sources may produce flicker. This is due to the AC frequency difference. So, when shooting slow-mo or any video for that matter, use the appropriate region for your country for the artificial light and NTSC for daylight or any natural light. You should remember to change this every time though. Next, even more elaborate settings like screen lock settings, auto turn off, the function used for the shutter button long press, the video and menus rotation by 180 degrees, which is manual only, no auto rotation is available, the switch to turn the video out over the micro USB and the date and time settings. Also here is the device info like firmware and stuff and the hard reset of the camera. The menus are very nice, it is responsive and clear. Now all of the settings of the camera can be changed without the smartphone. The camera is now totally autonomous. And you don't have to fiddle with the bottom cords and combinations like on GoPro or SJ Cam. Let's go to the main thing, the image. I like it a lot. And if the pictures are good and on par with GoPro and others, the video is the best that I've seen. The detail level is crazy. The bitrate is the same as for the GoPro, 60 megabits. But visually the picture is more detailed, the dynamic range is wider and you get less artifact. To compare the quality between these cameras, I took them with me on a trip. And I wound up with four cameras, Yi 4K, the GoPro 4 Black, the original Xiaomi Yi and the SJ5000. For the trip itself, I placed these cameras around the car and made a small road trip video out of it. When we arrived at our destination, I have attached all four cameras together facing the exact same direction, so the comparison would be exact. Further, you can see and compare the video quality between the cameras. A separate chapter will address the slow motion shooting. It is extremely important for an action camera. Many cameras introduce additional artifacts and noise, and that is even before the increased ISO noise because of the shorter shutter speed that is required for the faster frame rate. Now, the stabilization. The built-in digital stabilization is good. This is a feature that most of the action cameras lack really badly. It is of course easier to shoot wide-angle when handheld, but it is still not perfect, especially when walking or like running or riding a bike. The stabilizer solves that to a large extent. Also you may want to use a full-fledged 3-axis gimbal stabilizer or a simple mechanical pendulum stabilizer like the Smoothie. The built-in stabilizer is also very useful for self-shooting, like for blogging and stuff. The sound is also a strong point, I would say. It is a real stereo with noise cancelling and good quality mics. It sounds better than the GoPro and much better than the previous Yi camera or any other Chinese camera. In most cases, you can drop the separate mics and recorders. By the way, it is rumored that the compatible Bluetooth wireless microphone is on its way. I did a separate low-light test between the Xiaomi Yi 4K and a modern smartphone, the Samsung Note 4. The image of the action camera is more detailed and contrasty, which is quite surprising, even though there are more visible artifacts. The battery lasts for a while. In 4K you can shoot for up to 2 hours, twice the GoPro battery life. And the camera has the screen to power, impressive. The battery capacity is 1400 mAh. Shooting at night with this camera is interesting overall. The wide dynamic range creates a cinematic feeling and looks beautiful.
Xiaomi created a great camera. They were able to hit the spot from the very first try. Everything seems to be finished and thought through. The form, the interface, the balance. It is noticeably more expensive than their first camera, but still times less expensive than GoPro, being better at most of the things. I like the camera a lot and immediately it earns its place in my camera bag. This was the E4K. My name is Dmitro Voloshin. The new adventures await.